I've never been one for romance stories. Stories with romance in them? Now that I can rock with. I think when done correctly, romance can be an amazing bonus to an already engaging story, but stories where the primary narrative is centered around the romantic progression of one couple or a few couples? Yeah bro, that's just never really been my cup of tea. Romance anime have always been a bit weird to me. Full disclosure, despite everything I just said about not liking romance stories, I have like two of them shits in my top five anime of all time, so I guess I kinda lied to y'all. Again, the reason I give romance anime a bit of a pass in comparison to like live action rom-com movies is because I'm a fucking dweeb, but beyond that, I feel like most romance stories either simplify or sensationalize romance in a manner that's always felt kind of cringy to me. Anime, on the other hand, by default, tends to express emotion in a very simplified, sensationalized, let's just keep it a buck right now, cringy manner. And so when cringe stuff does happen in romance anime, which it does a lot, it's a lot easier for me to just accept the cringiness as anime being anime. Try that same shit in live action though and Nah, bro, that shit is weak as hell. Kaguya-sama Love is War is one of my favorite romance anime. Shit, I'll say it, bro. One of my favorite anime of all time, period. I started the show back in 2019 when it was first airing, and to my surprise, it entirely changed my perspective on how enjoyable a romance series can be. As a fan, I hold this series close to my heart, and so believe me, bro, when I finally tried to start season three a couple weeks ago, only to find that that shit was not hitting like it was supposed to, I was a bit distraught, but as I searched for a reason to explain why Kaguya-sama wasn't hitting like it used to, I realized that the answer was pretty simple. I had changed as a person. I'll only ever pick up a romance anime for one of two reasons. Reason one, to watch some fluff, or reason two, to hopefully see a reflection of my own experience on the screen. Kaguya-sama, for me, used to fall in the box too. I enjoyed it a lot because back in high school, I saw a lot of myself in Miyuki. Nigga, I'm 22 now. Ain't no damn Miyuki in me, bruh. In an effort to find a new romance anime that I could see myself in, preferably one that was more aligned with my current 2024 post-COVID DLC updates, I began my search the same way I had back in the day. On an incognito tab. But this time, I began my search with the added caveat that I was searching for an anime girl over the age of 20. This task was concerningly difficult. This is Tobacco, a... Uh, 20 something year old grad student that <laughs> all right i know that name sounds crazy but hear me out bro the characters in this manga are never really given actual names they only have like these monikers that they use to refer to each other my favorite moniker that this girl right here has is tobacco chan and so yeah for the time being i will be referring to her as such but this is tobacco a 20 something year old grad student that has a slightly debilitating nicotine addiction for like cute little anime girl quirk is that she's a fucking chain smoker. <laughs> also making his first year debut at Tobacco Same College is a dude named Cherry. Again, no actual names in this manga, so yeah, you get the vibe. Having just recently graduated from an all-boys high school, Cherry is coming into college with one main goal in mind, to get his degree. Psych, I literally did not see bro complete a single assignment for the entire duration of this manga. But to put Cherry's goal into his own words, at this school, he will do anything to get a girlfriend. Cherry is very inexperienced in the relationship department. His mindset towards getting a girlfriend literally reminds me of how I used to think in the seventh grade back when I was getting relationship advice off WikiHow and I'm not even trying to say that to flame him or discredit him or anything of that nature. I only bring up his inexperience because this inexperience happens to be an important aspect for both his character and the narrative of this story as a whole. Fortunately for Cherry though, what he lacks in experience, he makes up for in just straight up stupidity. You ever met somebody who's clueless to the point where they just don't consider the consequences of their actions at all, but then in turn they low-key end up being kinda successful because they're more willing to take the risks that nobody in their right mind would take? Like a gambling addict who becomes a millionaire by betting their mom's house on a game of roulette? Yeah, that's essentially Cherry for you. When Cherry sees Tobacco smoking a cigarette at one of their campus designated smoking spots, he is painfully aware of the fact that this woman is way out of his league. However, because Cherry only has three wrinkles in his brain, he doesn't really care, and he decides to shoot his shot. Now normally this type of reckless confidence would 
maybe be a recipe for success when trying to cold approach a girl, but the thing about Cherry is that although he definitely has the recklessness on lock, Cherry lacks the confidence to pull off this level of wizardry. In an attempt to try to look cool in front of Tobacco, Cherry decides to join her in smoking. However, because that's not him and he's never actually smoked before, Cherry ends up making himself look like an utter fool by trying to light the cigarette on the wrong end. I'm not gonna lie, I did not know that there was a correct way to light a cigarette, and if you knew that, your breath automatically stinks. Tobacco ends up calling Cherry's bluff, basically calling him a virgin to his face. She calls him Cherry Boy, and throughout the remainder of Cigarette and Cherry, we follow the love story of the boisterous Cherry and the reserved cigarette as they learn to navigate their own feelings, as well as each other's. The story of Cigarette and Cherry is very simple. Cherry, while falling in love with Cigarette, must first learn to love himself, and Cigarette, while falling in love with Cherry, must learn, or relearn rather, that it's okay to depend on others. Again, very simple premise. Throughout two thirds of the manga, there's really no more than six important characters during any given arc, and by the end of the story, we're bumped up to a whopping seven recurring characters, with one of the characters having been phased out entirely so it's still six. Despite its minimalist premise and setup, the writing in Cigarette and Cherry still manages to skirt around and sometimes entirely subvert a lot of the pitfalls that have been keeping me from enjoying romance anime lately. For one, the main characters in Cigarette and Cherry are all young adults. I too am a young adult. I think the reason that I can relate to a series about young adults more than I can relate to one that takes place between high school walls is, well, pretty straightforward, but on top of just having older and slightly more mature characters with the exception of Cherry who might be a little disabled, the main thing that attracts me to this story and would really cause me to develop an appreciation for the way that it was written is the way that this story handles consequences. One of the most frustrating aspects of watching romance anime, or really any sort of drama anime for that matter, is having to watch the embarrassingly inept self-insert main character guy proceed to bumble and fumble his way around the main girl over and over again, only to never actually face consequences for any of the bullshit that he or she actually, cause sometimes it's the girls that be tripping. But the leeway that romance anime tend to give their leads when it comes to their interactions with their romantic interests, it's never really sat right with me. Obviously, I enjoy characters with flaws, I enjoy characters that make mistakes, but I don't want to see a nigga making the same mistake 47 times over 4 seasons, and I definitely don't want to see a nigga get rewarded with cheeks for making these same mistakes because I'm not gonna lie, I'm on my hater shit right now, bruh. I want to see this fictional dunce fumble the bag just like all of us over here in IRL have had to fumble the bag for our mistakes. When it comes to consequences, Cigarette and Cherry strikes the perfect balance between the fluffy fantasy that we all watch romance anime to see and the harsh reality that causes one to become depressed and seek out romance anime in the first place. Cherry is, simply put, an idiot. A fucking imbecile. And so if we're going by IRL standards, I can't imagine anyone, let alone anyone as level-headed and as conventionally attractive as Cigarette being into this Nimrod. And so when you look at it from that perspective, realistically, the fact that this shit didn't just end immediately after chapter one is more than enough self-insert fantasy to go around, let's just be honest right now. Cherry is a constant fumbler. It's a core part of his character. It's the main aspect that keeps the story moving forward. And although Cherry's fumbles and missteps are sometimes played off as jokes, the author of Cigarette and Cherry actually does a pretty good job in keeping Cigarette's tolerance of Cherry at a healthy and realistic medium. When Cherry pulls some bullshit, Cigarette will most definitely call him out on it, and at points in the manga where Cherry fumbles hard, Cigarette, like any human being, will pull back a bit, forcing Cherry to live with the consequences of his actions until he makes them right. Cherry isn't rewarded for staying stagnant as a character. If he wants to better his situation or deepen his relationship with others, he's forced to grow as a person. And I'm not just talking about the, oh sh it's episode 11 out of 12, time to have a life changing epiphany type growth. Nah bro, in Cigarette and Cherry, we spend time with these characters as they grow. We get to witness the amount of effort that this growth takes. We witness the friction that comes from this growth, and so when these characters do have moments where that development is finally put on display, it becomes a genuinely hype moment to read, bro, because it feels like you as a reader have just successfully emerged out of the down bad trenches with these characters. I've been fortunate enough in my life to experience 
many, many stories from all different types of media that I would consider great. Shit. I could probably think of dozens of stories off the dome that I'd describe as quote unquote great in one regard or another. But for a story to really stick with me on that top tier level, it has to hit me in the right place at the right time. Now, this is something I can't really control, right? I kind of just end up stumbling upon stories that happen to meet me at the right moment. But one of the fears that I haven't been able to shake as I grow older is the fear that stories like this will become harder and harder to find as I approach uncages. I'm still young as hell in the grand scheme of things, but even now I'm starting to feel a shift in my perspective towards a lot of the series that I hold dear. I can no longer relate to the plight of a high school superhero or a high school sorcerer the same way that I could when I started these stories, and sure, I'm still at an age where I have hundreds of stories that are being written to cater to me as a man in my early 20s, but look bro, I won't be in my early 20s forever. And at first, that was a scary thought. At least, like, from a consumer perspective. I'm low-key excited to be an unk, bro. I'm, I'm trying to reach unk ages, bro. I'm trying to go crazy on the grill. Starting this year, I decided to address this fear, and I began to dig a little deeper. I began to search and scavenge a bit further than I had before when looking for new series to get into, and to my surprise, I've already found dozens of series like Cigarette and Cherry that have completely re-sparked and reinvigorated my passion for anime and manga. Sure, stories like Cigarette and Cherry will never be the type of story that everyone's talking about. It'll never be the type of story that has people fiending for blurry Japanese leaks just to find out what happens next, and... Honestly, that's fine. Being able to read Cigarette and Cherry in a vacuum of other people's opinions was actually a pretty refreshing experience, and at least for me, this series was some much needed reassurance that no matter how old I get, I'll always be able to find a relevant anime woman to hyper fixate on for like eight days or some shit. And that feels good to know.